one of the things you might need to do from time to time in a virtual machine that's in Azure is to attach a data disk to it. A couple of reasons for that. One of those would be we don't really want to put data in, you know, a user's profile, for example. Not that we normally do that a lot on servers, especially in Azure. Uh, but we probably don't want to put it on the same drive as the operating system drive. Probably want a separate drive. Makes it a little bit easier to disentangle the data from the operating system and to back it up and to encrypt it differently if you need be. Uh, all different kinds of reasons for that. It's just, even just logically, it's easier if you kind of segment it away from the operating system disk. So, to illustrate all this, I have a virtual machine here. I'm here just in Azure in my in my login and my in my portal. And what I want to do here is I'm going to go to virtual machines, as you can see right here. Once I'm within virtual machines, I can see that I have my virtual machine right here. And you know, a couple of different ways of going about this. What I'm going to do is just use the UI for now, and I'm going to download an RDP file and connect into it. The reason why I want to do that is because there's a couple of other things that I want to do here as well. Oh, and I guess the machine's deallocated. <laughs> I, better, I better spin it up so I can get my uh, connection here. I'll click on start, and then when that's done, we'll come back and complete this. All right, and once the machine has booted up here and we've made a connection to it, I do want to point a couple of things out here related to things that are a little bit unique for Azure Virtual Machines as opposed to just any machine you would install locally or, uh, or as a virtual machine locally. So here if we take a look at this and we go down to our advanced system settings, Notice that we do have uh, our paging file in a different location than you normally would in other installations. So if we go down into this advanced tab here in our advanced system properties, and then we go down here, we'll notice that the uh, page file is stored on our temporary storage drive. And that's the other thing. If I right click here and choose uh, disk management, you'll see that we have a, a different drive here than you'll normally have. It's this temporary storage file. And that's done in... Azure Virtual Machines for a couple of reasons, but one of them would be maybe that you, you don't want to have things like the paging file uh, backed up or made redundant or something like that because it takes more bandwidth if you have to put it in a redundant location. And it could also just cost more money. And it's not really that critical usually. So we can just keep that on the temporary storage. Now I'm going to kind of kill two birds with one stone here. Uh, sometimes you might want to add an additional drive. That's kind of our whole point of this particular video. Uh, but maybe I also need to make that drive drive letter D, but that's already occupied by this drive. So how should we manage that? What we should do is you want to take the, uh, this paging file, temporarily move it to drive C, change this drive letter to whatever else you want, and then you'll attach your next disk, your new disk. Once you've attached a new disk, you can assign it drive letter D, and then, you're, then you can, if you want to, you can switch the paging file that's that would be on drive C back to your temporary storage drive. So that's kind of the summary of what happens. I'll go through all of that. So for now, what I'm going to do is to set a system managed paging file. I'll set that on drive C. Right now we have two drives with the paging file. I'm going to then remove it from drive D and I'll set that here as well. This will again require a restart. So as I close all of this up, and close all of this up. It's going to prompt for a restart. While it's restarting, I'm just going to come back here to the virtual machine here in Azure because I'm going to need another drive, right? That's the whole point. I want to add an additional data disk here. So I'm going to go over here to disks and then I want to go down here. And what I'll do then is I'll create and attach a new disk here. I'll give it a name. I'll just call it, uh, I don't know, data, I guess. And you can choose which kind of storage you want. It gives you some various suggestions here. I'll just leave it at the default for now, but we probably don't need anything too fast for this. I'll just give a little bit more space here because that's kind of small for anything. So a 32 gigabyte drive, you can see the kind of throughput capabilities it has. You can use encryption if you like, and you can use write caching over here or read and write caching if you want, which is going to be best for your SSD types of disks instead of a hard disk drive. We've got SSD, but we don't need anything fancy, so we'll just leave it at that. But once it's done, one thing you want to be sure you do is to click up here to click save. <laughs> because it looks like I kind of finished down there, but really you still have to click on save up here, and then you'll see a message that it's creating the disk in your notes up here at the top. Now then once it's done, I'm gonna go back to the machine that I've now reconnected to, and if I right click on the, st on the start menu down here, go to my disk management, then we can see here as soon as I open it, it wants me to initialize the disk. This is the one that I just attached, okay? So that was really done while this machine was live. You don't have to shut the machine down and do it while it's off or something like that. 
So I did this while it was live. I am now online with it. And of course, I'll just do the rest of the stuff that we normally do. I'll quickly go through here and create some disk. Um, again, maybe I want this to be drive D, but that's not available to me right now. I'll just use E for the time being. Then I'll also call the volume label data just to make it clear. And then a next and finish and we're done there. So next thing I want to do here though is remember, now I've moved the paging file onto my drive C. I'm going to want it back on drive D, but I don't want it to be labeled drive D. So I'll change the drive letter here. We'll just choose something else. Let's pick something in the middle of the alphabet, like drive M maybe. You sure you want to do this? Fine. And there it goes. Now it's on drive M. From this point, I can change this to drive D. Simple enough in this little shell game of where's my paging file and all of that stuff. So I'm going to change that to drive D. And then next thing, the last thing I would do is then move the paging file back to drive M now, which is that temporary storage drive. So we'll go into our system settings and quickly go back over here once again in advanced and change and switch this back over to drive D where I'll click on set, then go to none on drive C, set again. And it looks like we've got everything we want there. Okay, so I'll click OK here. Get the notification that we have to restart the computer. All right, and then having rebooted the machine, I go back into disk management and I see I made a mistake. <laughs> I'm not supposed to put the paging file on the data drive because that again could get expensive. What's going to happen possibly is it's going to back it up to redundant locations. It's going to perform other backups. It's going to consume more storage and I don't, I don't really want that there. So you know how it goes from here. I would just move that paging file now to correct this mistake over to my new drive M. It's not really a new drive, but it's new drive letter. And then from henceforth, I put all my data on D and let the operating system run as it normally does, and we're finished. All right, now here, I've switched over to Azure, and I've also actually shut that machine down. You can tell here because there's a start button available. And the reason why I'm here is because I want to show you how we can manage that data kind of after the fact. There's a couple of different things you can do. So if I go down to our disks over here on the left, where you can see I'm clicking there, uh, I go down here to the data disk. One of the things I might be interested in doing if I select that disk is I could go over here to size and performance. What if we found out that, oh no, we're running up against a storage limitation. We need more storage. We need 64 gigabytes instead. Really easy to do. One of the things I really like about what we have here in, in Azure, it's very easy to quickly add additional storage. So I'll simply click resize and in just a moment, it's, it's already done, I guess. It's already 64 gigabytes before I'm even done talking about it. Now going back to disks here underneath the virtual machine, the other thing I would be interested in knowing is how can I actually delete this? I'll click it and huh, there's a delete button. Is it is it because you can only delete it when the machine's shut down? Well, the machine is shut down. Uh, I'm kind of puzzled as to why Microsoft even puts this button there because it doesn't seem as if you can ever use it. Uh, but anyway, uh, let's go back to the virtual machine and scroll down here to look at this, this uh, disk again. You can see again, it did resize to 64. Uh, and then if I scroll over here, Gosh, there's, you know, what can we do here to get rid of this thing? Well, scroll a little bit further. Bang. There's a little X right there, okay? And this is, uh, I gotta win the prize for one of the most obscure things that Microsoft has ever put into the UI. Not only is there this bald guy covering it up right now, but even if you are looking for it, it's kind of hard to find. Maybe they did that on purpose so that you don't accidentally delete important data, but you hit that. And then once again, be sure to click on save. Once you've done that, that disk will then be gone. Of course, it's also going to take the data along with it, so be sure that uh, you have successfully backed it up or moved that data elsewhere first. Now then also, if you would like to learn how to do some of this using PowerShell instead, you can do that as well. Just refer to this Microsoft article that you see here, or you could probably just Google for the title. And when we go down into this, we see that there is some scriptage that you can use. You'll just, of course, change the values that appear in this section here for these variables to whatever applies to you. Uh, and then the rest of it should run just fine. And then there's more here as well. You can use manage disks in an availability zone. You have to initialize the disk, attach it to an existing virtual machine, and, and there you have it. So if you need to, to script this, you can certainly do it this way. I think it's probably faster in the UI, unless you want to use this as a basis for maybe changing storage on, a, on several machines at one time, then it would probably be more effective. But that's how you attach a data disk to a virtual machine. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from CBT Nuggets. Also, if you're new to IT or are interested in an IT career, visit cbtnuggets.com and sign up for a free trial.